Ronin, a game with a promising concept that looks great on paper, but falls short on its expectations and execution. The game has the potential to be a masterpiece, but its frustrating control scheme, repetitive gameplay, and non-existent storyline cripples it from reaching for the 5 stars. Ronin's novelty is that it is a turn-based 2D platforming game with RPG elements. The gameplay looks amazing in a trailer, but when you get into the game you very quickly realize that it's not as deep and not as creative as you thought. It's good and pretty fun most of the time, but it gets stale after a bit, even after upgrading your skill set through skill points. The game doesn't even try to hide the fact that it's a broken and unfinished mess, giving you a prompt at the bottom of the screen that the jump indicator isn't even accurate to showing you the precise point at which you will land when you let go of the mouse button. This inaccuracy has caused my death on multiple occasions where the curved line showing my jump path told me I would land on a platform but instead I fell through the platform and I got shot. You also can't change the strength of your character's jump which means if you want to precisely hop off a ledge and land on the floor below without being launched into the wall it's not possible. Did no one at Devolver Digital play the levels they were presented before they released the game? Did the creator just make the basic mechanics then make the levels and then abandon the project and then Devolver release what was left? I'm beginning to think so because the ability to scale any vertical surface in the game is ridiculous and results in some pretty cheap level design shortcuts where instead of taking the time to figure out how you're supposed to get over a wall, you can just crawl up the wall like Spider-Man. I think that if the wall climbing mechanic was taken out and the levels were designed with the mechanic absent, it would have resulted in much more creative levels that force you to think. Now the combat is interesting and it does force you to think about where to go next, but it too is broken. At the bottom of your screen you have a limit gauge, and when that fills up, you're allowed to pull off special moves such as throwing your sword. Whenever you land on someone or slice them up, your limit gauge will fill. But jumping or taking a turn will make it deplete. If your limit gauge fills all the way up, it resets, but gives you a free turn. This unfortunately breaks the flow of combat instead of enhancing it, because your limit gauge is never full enough for you to do anything, because the move you just acquired by landing on two people can't be performed, because you have to be in the air to perform the move, and jumping into the air costs you a limit gauge point, so you lose the ability to use your special move while you're in the middle of trying to perform that special move. It's just frustrating, and it's trial and error gameplay with a loading screen that is way too long especially for a 2D game. The combat also has loopholes that can be exploited as well, like jumping repeatedly on the same person to avoid getting shot, or jumping underneath platforms so that your character teleports on top of the platform to perform the kill while your enemies shoot at where you were just at a second ago while you were underneath the platform. The controls are unresponsive too, and this can get you killed, because the only way to uh, perform a kill is by moving your mouse over an icon above the enemy's head and clicking it to perform the killing blow but sometimes the game just thinks that's what you want to do rather than responding to you clicking away from the person and it just will kill them and then you'll get shot. It also remembers any clicks that you might have made while you were performing the killing blow and automatically leaps to wherever you click after the attack animation is done. I'm really not sure how that got through beta testing. Now I like the idea of the grappling hook mechanic, but it's ruined by having the ability to scale walls. It's also ruined by being the only thing that you can do while you're in midair during a combat sequence and it doesn't show you exactly where your swing will put you before the guard shoots. So using the grappling hook during combat is a guessing game because you're not sure how much momentum you have since the game is paused and you just hope for the best. Also, you can't change your trajectory mid-jump, but you can grapple hook the floor for some reason. If I, if you had the option to change your jump path just a little bit by clicking underneath your character mid-jump and allowing the grappling hook to only be used on things above you or beside your character, it would have made more sense, but you, but you can't. You can grapple hook onto the floor to swing you downwards. You also can't move with WASD at any time during a combat sequence, which means you can't can't shimmy across a ceiling or climb up a wall if you're holding on to either of those things during combat. You can only hop, 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 and slash. Again, with a suggestion of what they could have done to fix this is by allowing the player to right-click a spot and have the character run there instead of leaping there. The running animation would make everything play in slow motion as your character moves. Then it would count as the player taking a turn and would have the same effect as if you just jumped to that position. And I think it would have been fun to see bullets fly past the protagonist as she ran in slow motion. Oh yeah, I might have forgotten to mention that your character is female. Speaking of which, I love games that don't tell you a story but let you discover the story yourself. Like instead of following a narrative and you just play the game while the story unfolds before you, you get the satisfaction from unfolding it yourself. This game um, doesn't do that. You really don't find out more about the story or about your character as you progress through the levels. The first level, you just have this photograph of people you're going to kill and then you pick up your sword 
and you're infiltrating the bad guy's base and hacking their computers. However, if you bought the premium edition on Steam, you get a digital prequel comic book explaining the lore of the game. This is not acceptable to me. I'm not buying a DLC comic book to get an understanding on why our protagonist is trying to kill Bill. Just present the story in the game you made. Now, as you probably already know, whenever you search a video game on Wikipedia, it always has a section that explains the entire plot of the game, beat by beat, level by level, discussing characters and things that happen on screen in explicit spoiler-heavy detail. Here's the one for Ronin. Ronin is about a young girl known as the Ronin, which has lost her father for unknown reasons, and the only thing that she has left is a photo of five former associates of her father responsible for his death. The Ronin is now in charge of self-justice by taking revenge upon those five persons, one at a time. Now I realize that the plot doesn't make the game, but games without a strong plot such as Smash Brothers or Call of Duty rely on their gameplay and replayability factor to justify the absence of a storyline, or in Call of Duty's case, a somewhat well-written storyline. The world of Ronin is interesting, and I want to dig into the lore and understand why this young woman is setting out on this quest to avenge her dead father, but the story just isn't there to be discovered. Uh, the lack of story is whatever, but the lack of content is inexcusable. This game was part of Steam Early Access, and then it left Early Access of June of this year, 2015. Since then, it's had a total of 9 updates, and the last update was released in October. After each of these 9 updates, the game is still broken and frustrating as ever. If the creator were to address the problems everyone is having with the game, it would deserve the ratings it's currently getting. But the escapist couldn't be fooled, giving the game a 2 out of 5 and calling it remarkably average, and that there isn't enough here to maintain interest. If this game were a Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, then the story would be the turkey. But because your mom undercooked it, you won't be eating. Uh, the gameplay is mashed potatoes, and though they taste pretty good, you get tired of just eating mashed potatoes after a while. The mechanics are the silverware you're eating with, and because dad forgot to take the time to wash all the forks and spoons, you'll have to eat your food with a knife. The music, however, is dessert.